In this series, we're going to take a look at how Paid Membership Pro sends emails. We're here in the settings area under the email tab, and here are a variety of settings. Paid Membership Pro sends emails for a variety of reasons. New signups, account shutdown, changes in things, that sort of thing. This is where you can configure how that email works, who it's from, etc. Here at the top, you can set the from email. This is what's default in my setup right now. I'm using a local development environment with desktop server, so it says membership.dev, but you should set this to whatever you want your emails to be from. Also, you have a from name, so this would be your own personal name. Now by default, Paid Membership Pro takes over all the mail sending for your entire WordPress site even for comments and things like that and it will use these settings if you don't want that if you want the rest of WordPress to use its normal email stuff then you would check this box and then the above settings will only apply to emails sent by paid membership pro in here we can decide when paid membership pro sends an email when a member checks out when an admin changes a user's membership level through the dashboard, when a user cancels his or her account, and when a user updates his or her billing information. These are checked by default, but you could uncheck them if you wish. And then here's an option for new users. By default, a new user in WordPress gets a WordPress email. Additionally, Paid Membership Pro sends a welcome email. If you leave this unchecked, then they get only the email from Paid Membership Pro, which is a little less confusing for new users. That's all there is for the email settings. It's pretty simple. The emails look nice, and they convey the information that they need to. If you want to learn about how to configure what the emails say, there's a link right here. Click here to learn more about Paid Memberships Pro emails. And when you click it, it goes to the Paid Memberships Pro website. And it says this page is restricted to free level members or higher. So we have to create an account and log in to see the documentation. But it is free. This is an excellent example of Paid Membership Pro's ability to create free memberships. This way, you get information from people. Their name, their email address, that sort of thing so that you can stay in touch with them. You can use this information for any number of things, but we're not going to log in and look at those. You can edit emails for a long, long time. The next tab we're going to look at is the Advanced tab. Here we have some messages. The message for logged in non-members. So for example, you've logged in and you have a free account, but you haven't paid for the advanced account or whatever. Right here it'll say, this account is for, and then there's a placeholder, levels, members only. And then you can click to register. There's also a referrer option as a placeholder. So you could make a link to go back to where you just came from. And then there's a message for logged out users. And it simply says this content is for levels members only. Again, showing what levels may access this content. And then there's a similar one for the RSS feed. So you can actually lock down the RSS feed as well. Here we have the option to filter searches and archives. If we say no, then a non-member will see results in their search that are restricted to members. Now if they click on them, they're told they can't see them and they need to register. But they can see that they're there. If you say yes, then non-members won't even see that content. They will never know that it's even there. And there are good scenarios for wanting either of these. You just need to decide which you like. And we can choose to show excerpts to non-members, or not. 
I would recommend showing excerpts because it shows non-members a taste of what's inside and you can customize those excerpts to say anything you wish. You can choose to hide ads from all members, certain members, or no members. And then you can choose to use reCAPTCHA for free memberships only or all memberships or none. reCAPTCHA is a program for Google that lets you put up the squiggly letters that are really hard to read to prove you're not a robot. In order to use this, you have to sign up for reCAPTCHA and then optionally require terms of service on signups. It will want to go on a page and I have not created a page yet. I would not want to use any of these because these are used for my store. So I need to go up to pages and go to add new and I will type in terms of service. I'm using make so I'm going to choose the default template and publish. And you'll note that I've left it blank. But I'll come back here I reload the page so that it knows about my new page and I'll come down here and choose terms of service and hit save settings. And now we have a terms of service page. We'll take a look at that later. So quick review. We looked at the email tab and how to set up who it's from, when emails are sent, and very briefly at how to change them or at least how to find the documentation on changing them. And then under the Advanced tab, which is largely about managing failures. You want to manage what happens when someone tries to access something they're not allowed to. In our next session, we're going to take a look at membership levels, which really gets into the meat of this whole thing.